2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Hear the word of God. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We therefore are Christ's ambassadors through God who are making this appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word this morning, but we want you to bring that word to life in our hearts. Give us understanding, give us a deeper insight into your word so that it might have an impact on, on our lives, on our very characters. May we draw it in. May it, it do its work that you sent it to do. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, when I was a kid, boy, I loved, I loved to go to Kennywood Park. Anybody ever been to Kennywood Park before? I guess most of you have been to Kennywood Park. We pull up into that big, big parking lot, look over the hill, and I would see all of those rides. Oh, what a glorious sight that was to a ten-year-old boy. Those uh, old coasters rolling up that they reminded me uh, uh, of creatures like dinosaurs out there in a new world. Then you would go down and you would go through the ticket booth and you would get your ticket and then you would go down this asphalt path and it went down under the highway. You remember that? Through the tunnel. It went through this tunnel. It was like you're being born anew as you come out of the tunnel and see this glorious new land. To the right was the turnpike. A bunch of little cars that you got to drive around. I'll tell you what, when you're a little kid, it's fun to drive those cars. Next to the turnpike was the old mill. Some people call it the tunnel of love. You got in this boat, you went through these caverns, and things popped out at you. Across from that was a ride called the rotor. You did not want to get on the rotor if you had a weak stomach. It was like a cylinder, and you stood there, and spun like this, and you stuck to the wall. And then the floor dropped out. Oh man, it was a tough ride to ride. I can only ride it once when I went there. Then if you moved on down, there was the arcade on the right, and all that fun games you could play in the arcade. And then came my two favorite roller coasters, the Jack Rabbit, it had a double dip. You flew out of your seat when you rode the Jack Rabbit. And next to it was the racer, and the racer you got, you got to race against it. Another group of people riding in another roller coaster next to you. Oh man, that was so much fun when I was a kid. One day uh, a year in the summer, I would enter that new world. By the time I got to be 10 or 11, I was old enough, and my buddies were old enough, we didn't have to stick with our parents back then. Hey, just go ahead, run, play the park. From the time we got there to the time we left, we ran from ride to ride to ride. We didn't even care if we ate or not. That's how much fun we were having. Nowadays, we have what's called virtual reality. Have you seen these virtual reality headsets that you can put on? You put these headsets on and, and you can enter into new worlds. You, you can walk with the dinosaurs. Put these headsets on and there's a brontosaurus. There's a T-Rex. Or you can visit other planets with these virtual reality headsets. Go to Mars. Go to Venus. Or you can go in, in, into a haunted house. Ghosts will pop out at you. Monsters will pop out at you. Funny thing it is, in these virtual worlds, you have the same response emotionally and physiologically as you would in the real world. If a monster pops out at you, Probably let out a scream, your heart just ramps up. Although Kennywood Park and, and these virtual reality headsets introduce us to new worlds, they are not the real world that we're living in. The 
day-to-day -day world where we live. However, God opens up a door to a new world to us. God did that in the past, and God does that right now. In the past, in the Old Testament, there came a day when the wandering Israelites who were wandering through the wilderness for so long, finally, they came to the end of their journey. Forty years of living like nomads, setting up camp, moving from place to place aimlessly, eating the same food every day. Finally, that wilderness journey came to an end. Now, the original generation of Israelites, the one that Moses delivered from Egypt, the one that crossed through the Red Sea, the one who rebelled so many times against God, that generation had passed away during those 40 years, but their children, the next generation, the second generation, stood on the brink of a new world. Joshua 5, 9, then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you, so the place has been called Gilgal to this day. Now Gilgal was a very important place to the Israelites. That's where they camped after they crossed the Jordan River into the land that was flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. They camped there at Gil, uh, Gilgal. It was the launching pad into that new world. On that day, they celebrated the Passover together. That Passover meal was that meal that would commemorate their deliverance from Egypt. God's promise of bringing them to that new land, that land flowing with milk and honey, was finally fulfilled. Let me read these words. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year, they ate the produce of Canaan. So they stepped into this new world of abundance. A world where they had more variety on their menu. A world where they, they would be able to produce. Not only could they produce their own food, their own crops, but they would produce the foundations of a great nation. At Gilgal, their lives were filled with excitement and energy and vision. They would look forward, forward to what was coming their way. If someone would have said to them at that point in time, well, why don't we just cross back across the Jordan River and, and become nomads again? Let's just, let's just become wanderers again. They would have answered emphatically, no. The day of opportunity had arrived. They were ready to launch into this new world. The Apostle Paul knew exactly how they felt. When he was known as Saul, he was of the old world. He was a hardline letter of the law Pharisee, dedicated to the old ways of Moses. When this new Christian sect arose, and he was determined to extinguish it until the day he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. It was like crossing over the Jordan into a new world. And although he was temporarily blinded by his encounter with Christ, his spiritual eyes were open to a new world. With the depth of the knowledge that he had of Moses' law, and with the depth of the knowledge of all the prophets and their prophecies, Jesus revealed to, to Paul how he was the son, the culmination of the law, the culmination of all those prophecies of the Old Testament. Jesus revealed to him that he was that Lamb of God, that perfect sacrifice for the sins of man. Those temple sacrifices that they did for so many centuries were just a shadow of what was to come. Paul understood at that moment that Jesus was the fulfillment of all the prophetic writers and all the prophecies of the Old Testament. He was that son of David that was prophesied, the one who would establish an eternal kingdom. He was the one who would be wounded for our transgressions who would be bruised for our iniquities. He was the one who would die, but 
then be raised again. When Jesus opened his eyes to all of these things, Saul became the Apostle Paul. If someone said to him, well, are you going to return to Jerusalem to your life as a Pharisee following the laws of Moses and persecuting the Christians, he would have said, are you kidding? How could I go back to that old way of life knowing what I know now, seeing what I see now? That's why he said these words to the Corinthian church. This is what he said to them. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. And I noticed that there was an exclamation point after the word here in Paul's statement. In other words, he was excited about this. This was good news. Like those Israelites stepping out of the wilderness into the promised land, followers of Jesus Christ are stepping into a new world. It's not a virtual world. It's not a fantasy theme park. It is a real world, and we enter this world as new creations. Like the Apostle Paul who encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, we now have a new perspective. We see things differently. The old is gone. We don't want to go back to that life that we lived before we encountered Christ on that intimate level. We don't want to go back to the old ways of wandering through the wilderness, of, of frivolous and shadow of materialistic and selfish wanderings. Because this new world is a world in which love for God and love for people have become the priority. And when that becomes your priority, life changes. Life takes on new meaning. Life takes on new purpose. You begin to understand what God has, in plan, has planned for you. You wake up in the morning anticipating the journey God is going to take you on. And then Paul said this, all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, that's, that's what this church is all about, but the, the ministry of reconciliation, what does that mean? That means we have the privilege of opening up the door to a new world for those who have been wandering in the wilderness. What a difference Christ has made in our lives. What a difference we can make in someone else's life when we open up that door. Amen.